Oracle becoming the good guys, Sue suspending $10 million to fork Rel, and Alma stepping back to focus on ABI compatibility. So we need something a little bit more fun. Something that got a little bit out of hand. This is a merge request for Red Hat RPM of iperf 3. Fixes CVE 2023 38403 resolves this right here by Jonathan Wright. This has since been merged, but initially was going to sit dormant. Now, Jonathan Wright is an interesting character. This is one of those Red Hat freeloaders, the infrastructure team lead at Alma Linux, also a packager at Fedora. After going through all the proper channels, at least the ones discussed publicly, going to the Red Hat bug tracker, getting disapproved, and then making the merge request, he got a very interesting response. After pinging one of the maintainers, thanks for the contribution. At this time, we don't plan to address this in RHEL, but we'll keep it open for evaluation based on customer feedback. Now, from Jonathan's perspective, it seemed like everything that needed to be done had already been done. Going to the CentOS stream contribution page, some of it's not actually complete. Um, this part here is just missing. So you don't actually know what a good patch and a bad patch is. So you pretty much just have to wing it. So at least from what we could see publicly, this commit was fine. But customer feedback is a really weird way to address a CVE. That makes sense for a feature request or an update request or something like that, but not security. Is customer demand really necessary to fix CVEs? I can kind of understand with this one here, if you don't want to rebase to a newer version, but I genuinely do not understand rejecting this one. In this case, to address the CVE, they had to update to a newer version. That could cause issues with certain client setups, so that one is a little bit iffier to do. But this one, it shouldn't be. At least, that's the way it seemed to Jonathan. And in the most confusing response possible, we commit to addressing Red Hat defined critical and important security vulnerabilities. Security vulnerabilities with low or moderate severity will be addressed on demand when customer or other business requirements exist to do so. Which also does make sense if they're the ones doing the development work. If it's not affecting any of the customers, they'll get to it when they get to it. But in this case, the work was literally already done, so why couldn't it have just been merged? This CVE was a fairly minor CVE, but a CVE nonetheless. Now, initially, it wasn't marked as important. Instead, it was marked as medium. It got re-evaluated later down the line. An integer overflow flaw was found in the way iperf3 dynamically allocates memory buffers for JSON formatted messages. A remote attacker could send a specifically crafted sequence of bytes on the iperf3 control channel with a specified JSON message length of 0xff, you can see what it says there, to trigger an integer overflow leading the receiving process to abort due to heap corruption. This flaw allows an attacker to use a malicious client to cause a denial of service on an iperf3 server or potentially use a malicious server to cause connecting clients to crash. Performing this in the real world was pretty difficult and it's not privilege escalation or exposing passwords, so it's not really that important, but if someone else does the work for you, might as well just take the work. You know, especially after the whole Red Hat calling out the rebuilders for not submitting code for just freeloading off a Red Hat, right here you have someone directly from Alma Linux who is trying to submit code, and you're basically just telling them, we don't want your code, go away, we'll deal with it later. So you probably noticed the emoji responses and can probably guess what the general community opinion is here. This snippet right here was posted onto Twitter by Jeff Geerling. He didn't post a link to the thread, but if you post a snippet of text, someone's going to go and search for the text, and they're going to go and find it. And when they found it, it got posted on Reddit, Hacker News, and all over the place, and kind of exploded. Somewhere down the thread, Mike McGrath said, the best way to get this bug fixed is via a support ticket. We don't ignore comments in bugs, but they don't hold nearly as much weight as a support ticket. When we say customer feedback, that's where we get it from. Now, they did get a lot of feedback in here, but I wouldn't be surprised if they suddenly got an influx of support tickets as well once Mike said this. All the way down the bottom, they actually changed their mind. Red Hat Product Severity have completed evaluation of the vulnerability and have re-rated it as important severity, will therefore merge the MR. 
thanks again for the contribution. Just one more note, don't expect the production build immediately. We have a very specific process for these things. It will take some time merging for now then. Frankly, this initial response from Red Hat is terrible. Why would anybody want to work with your repo if they go through all of your accepted channels and make the commit and then you say, well, none of the customers know they wanted to fix the security issue, so until they say they want to fix it, we're just not going to merge this. Like that, that doesn't make any sense as a stance to take. Obviously, they don't have to merge it, but this is not a response that would make anybody want to work with you. But directly because of this thread and the negative response it got, some positive progress is being made. Firstly, Mike McGrath said this, We should probably create a what to expect when you're submitting doc. You should probably also finish the send to a stream docs, but hey, more docs are always good. Getting the code written is only the first step in what Red Hat does with it. We'd have to make sure there aren't any regressions, QA, etc. This was nowhere to be seen in the initial response. QA in particular is going to be unpredictable because we may decide not to take an MR simply because the team doesn't have the ability to test it or add docs or whatever. So thank you for the contribution. It looks like the Fedora side of it is going well, so it'll end up in RHEL at some point. And Jonathan agrees. The worst part of this is me feeling that I have wasted my time by even submitting a PR here. I think a documented path on getting a tentative, yes, we're interested in merging this, or no, we're not interested, from the relevant Red Hat party or maintainer would be extremely valuable before any work on the patch is done, to avoid wasted time for contributors. But I think the more interesting discussion is between Paolo Bonzi, a Red Hat employee, and Philip Ledger, one of the commenters in this thread. Being open to community contributions still means that the community has to meet the same standard and use the same process as Red Hat contributions. The contribution process is sometimes a pain, but it's what makes RHEL and CentOS Stream and Alma 2 stable. It's there for good reasons. Believe it or not, most people at Red Hat are super happy to have you folks on board, and I'm sorry if you feel like you're wasting your time. Please consider that we also have to learn at the same time as you. Your contribution may lead to making the process even more streamlined in the future. And Philip responds by saying, while I agree the community needs to meet the same standards, there's been no input from Red Hat on how to meet those standards. Believe it or not, no one is asking for this to be accepted blindly, but some feedback on what would be needed to get to the standard needed for it to be merged is completely missing from the response here. I'll go one further. It's not just the documentation that needs work, but also the response. Again, there has been zero mention on this ticket on how this could be improved to get it merged in, despite the many chances, including this comment here that he just made. Instead of saying, we will do better, just start to do better and provide the information, even if it's only in an informal way for the moment. Comments like, besides this still unrated CVE, are not helpful either. Does it really matter about the rating when someone else is doing the work for you? But all that aside, let me reiterate that one point in all of this that matters. People are still willing to work with Red Hat. We all know there are still lots of good people that work there. We are just asking that you work with the community. Tell us what you want so that this can be a positive experience for everyone. And finally, the thing that should have been in the first comment, the thing that would have avoided this entire drama, someone says what needs to be done. Look at the upstream severity and decide if it has to be changed, because this in turn may define the process that is used to distribute the fix to real customers. This is why it's important there is not even an upstream severity associated yet. Find the upstream patch and check that it has the same as the proposed one. Somebody needs to test the fix build and check that it does the fix. But since the upstream patch didn't come with a test case, somebody has to figure out if there is a reproducer or craft it. This is probably Red Hat security team, but it's one area where Alma can help too. And decide if it's possible or worth it to contribute the reproducer upstream. Yes, it's a lot of work for a relatively simple patch, but it's exactly what separates Fedora from CentOS Stream and RHEL, and it's work that has always been done and has to happen for both Red Hat and community contributions. This is exactly what should have been said at the start. If a list like this was posted, maybe in a more formal form, no one would have cared about it. They'd be like, oh, okay, so these things need to be done, we can work through these, and then get it merged. Not this. This is bad. Honestly, I wish the initial Red Hat announcement was handled more like this, where you have a discussion and 
by the end, everybody feels a little bit more informed and we understand why Red Hat is doing something and what they are trying to achieve. Because in that initial announcement, half of it was just corporate speak and half of it was just saying, stop freeloading off our system. Like, that was not a good way to handle it. What we saw here, we saw a productive discussion being had and we move forward and everyone leaves with a better understanding of what's going on. That is what you should be aiming for. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this was handled well? Do you think the way they originally handled it was perfectly fine and everybody should just stop complaining? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Lowercase Red Hat W.